best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. Oh, Mom, shh. Well, you fix with the effort of... Oh, well, I gotta wear this to dance. Shh. It was the season... Betty Jo's oh, rehearsing fun. for the high school contest. Oh. When is she gonna start going out with boys? <laughs> She's more interested in winning. Come on. Fair. We had everything before. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. <laughs> in short... The period was so like the present. <laughs> some of its noisiest thoughts and decisions for good or for evil, <laughs> in a superlative degree of comparison alone. <laughs> there was a king with a large jaw and a queen with a plain face on the throne of England. There was a king with a large jaw and a queen with a fair face. Bring it out loud. Why don't you get your own ear buff? Bring it out loud. So like that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil. How can a fella sleep with all that racket going on? In both countries, it was clearer than crystal to the lords of the state preserves of loaves and fishes that things in general were settled forever. And now... Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to take a snooze, Betty Jo, if you don't mind. What's the matter? I lost my voice. What? I lost my voice. So you ain't going to win that contest unless you talk up. Betty Jo, why did you stop? Uncle Joe, let Betty Jo practice. Go ahead with your speech, honey. I can't. I lost my voice. Now, Sarah Jane's gonna beat me. Well, Uncle Joe's done it again. I didn't do nothing. Well, Betty Jo lost her voice when you walked in. Yeah, but I... No buts about it, Uncle Joe. You're a jinx. I am not. You are, too. Just a second. I don't like that kind of talk. Well, Mom, let's face it. Lately, all Uncle Joe has to do is look at somebody and pow! Disaster. He's nothing but a big bundle of bad luck. Looking at you and nothing happened. Stick around. Hey. Girls, Betty Jo losing her voice has nothing to do with bad luck. She's just been practicing too hard. I have not. Uncle Joe jinxed me. You say that once more, and you're not only going to lose your voice, but your seating capacity. If it wasn't for the fact that we're related through your mother, I'd sue you for slandering my good name, which ain't Jinx. Now, you see, you've heard Uncle Joe's feelings. But I've got to get my voice back. We'll get it back for you. All you need to do is rest and sip some hot water and honey. Come on. He ain't gonna deliver these. You've got to. We ain't a gonna. Now, we'll deliver Newt Kiley's mail. And Fred Zibbles. And Ben Miller's. But we ain't taking nothing to the shady rest. As long as Joe the Jinx is there. Look, you want to lose the mail delivering franchise? Rather lose that than the train. <laughs> you don't have to stop. Just throw the mail off. Oh, no, thank you. Look, as postmaster of the Hooterville Post Office, I order you to deliver this mail. I dare you to pull your hat off and say that. <laughs> you know the motto of the United States Post Office? Yeah. Don't steal the pens. <laughs> no, I mean, neither rain, nor sleet, nor dark of night can stay these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. <laughs> oh, you're just making that up. <laughs> Take the mail. Well, all right. Floyd, let's appoint our rounds and get it over with. <laughs> What's that for, Mrs. Bradley? A high school oratory contest. Betty Jo won it two years in a row. Now, if she wins again, she gets to keep it. Oh, I hope she does. <laughs> Did the mail get here yet? Uh, Uncle Joe just went down to get it. I'm expecting a letter with a nice, fat bonus check in it for those 12 orders I sent in. Oh, well, good luck. Get away, bad luck. Give me the mail. Get back, get back. Way back out of voodoo range. Give me the mail. Don't come any closer. I'll let you have it. We're de voodooizing you. I ain't no voodoo. If I was, I'd shrink your heads down to the size of your brains. You keep your evil eye off of us, Joe. Yeah, don't look at the train. Give me that mail or I'll complain to Washington. 
Ain't they got enough trouble without you? Quick, fling the letters to the dough. You all right? He done it to me, Charlie. <laughs> Out of the cab. Wasn't my fault. I didn't lay a hand on him. Well, did he get hurt? No, I fell on his head. <laughs> Thanks. Here's a letter for you, Mr. Harrington. Oh, this is what I've been waiting for. Mom, is there any mail? Very funny. <laughs> Anything for me, Kate? No. Huh. Mr. Dog, Shady Rest Hotel. Who could that be for? <laughs> you? <laughs> Dear Mr. Dog, we received the coupon requesting information for our art appreciation course. Art appreciation? <laughs> He's the one that's been chewing the coupons out of my magazine. <laughs> oh, no. What's wrong, Mr. Harrington? I've been fired. I thought you were going to get a bonus for those orders. They were all canceled. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Carson, you never should have gone down for the mail. <laughs> well, he always... Kate, it isn't true. Oh, of course it isn't. Hi, Sam. Hi. Getting ready to roll the presses. Oh, is that this week's Hootable World Guardian? Yeah, coming out right on time, two days late. <laughs> I was uh, holding the front page for an extra. An extra? Yeah, an extra classified ad. <laughs> Mrs. Crindle thought she'd sell her piano, but she can't find the stool. <laughs> well, is there any big news? Well, I got a story about the box factory in Pixley. Oh, and that Lem Waller sprained his thumb milking his cow. <laughs> yeah, they'll both be out of action for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Joe wasn't over to see Lem recently, was he? Oh, now, Sam, you're not going to start that nonsense, too. Oh, I'm just teasing, Kate. Well, it isn't funny for Uncle Joe. He's getting blamed for anything that happens around here. Yeah, there's nothing worse than blind, ignorant superstition. I'm well, glad to see you have the sense to know that. Yeah. You can say a lot of obnoxious things about Joe, but one thing he ain't, and that's jinx. Thanks, Sam. Well, it's okay, Joe. I... Going back to the hotel. Not on this train. These are Kate's groceries. Well, put them down. We'll put them aboard. Put them down. Well, pick them up. Well, back away. <laughs> Serves you right. Now, look at here, evil eye. You two fellas going steady? <laughs> I thought you were going to put the uh, groceries on the train. Them two jokers wouldn't let me get on. You're darn right we won't. What happened to your nose? Same thing. It happened to my head, only worse. <laughs> Joe's barred from the train for life. Well, if he's barred, I'm barred too. But, Kate, you're not dangerous. Joe is. Either he rides or we both walk. Well, all, all right. He, he can ride. <laughs> for the cannonball's last trip. <laughs> this is interesting. The Pixley Box Factory is thinking of moving to Orderville. Good for the town. Make a lot of jobs for a lot of people. There ain't no quicker way to ruin the economy of a community than with jobs. <laughs> yeah. Work sure interferes with those afternoon naps. <laughs> but don't worry, Uncle Joe. Crabwell Corners is trying to get the box factory over there. Crabwell Corners. The biggest business they got in that town's the Edsel Agency. <laughs> Can't you read any faster? <laughs> he can't even read without moving his lips. Well, maybe he'll improve after he 
has his art appreciation course. <laughs> Something wrong, Floyd? Charlie told me to keep an eye on Hard Luck Harry. Good luck, Floyd. Well, Joe, you've done it again. Get off! Get off! Wow, 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 we're in one piece. I didn't do nothing. You're riding on the train, that's enough. It's the first time in years the wheels have run off the track. Wait a second, fellas. Kate, he can't ride our train. Who wants to? It ain't safe. No, Uncle Joe. I'm walking. You go with him. Go on, go with him. Kate, I'm sorry, but he's got us scared. Boo! <laughs> Boy, let's get this thing back on the track. <laughs> Now, just hold your horses, Arnold. You'll get your wet joke whistle. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Hiya, Fred. Oh, hi, Joe. Done do well? Yeah, need more water. Doris and me's figuring on adding 50 more pig straws, Fred. Arnold, Arnold, watch your manners. <laughs> Pig sure is slurping up a lot of water. Oh, that ain't nothing, Joe. You ought to see Doris after she gets through plowing. See, hey, you walking. How come? Oh, uh, such a nice day. Oh. Charlie and Floyd told you off the train? What makes you think that? Oh, I've heard stories about you. Well, they ain't true. Uh, I know it. I don't know all the people who are able to jinx people. Thanks, Fred. No, if there's anything to that, Doris and me had never been able to stay married 40 years. <laughs> Your dog thirsty? <laughs> well, he said he was, didn't he? <laughs> well, you can drink out of Arnold's bucket. I don't think he'll mind. <laughs> no, that dog is nearly as smart as Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Have a drink too? Sure you can, Joe. And you're gonna find this is the coolest, sweetest, purest water you ever. <laughs> That's funny. Must have dried up. Well, that well goes down 60 feet. <laughs> you ought to try for 70. <laughs> Now, that water and that well was all right until you come. Get off of my property, you jinx. Don't you, don't you look at all. Get off of my property. Don't you worry, Arnold. I don't want to let him jinx you. Don't you worry, boy. Uncle Joe? No, it's us, Mom. Betty Joe, you're shouldn't be out in the night air with your throat. Oh, it's fine, Mom. It got better the minute Uncle Joe left. It got <laughs> better the minute you started the hot water and honey. Now, you get upstairs and go to bed. Yes, ma'am. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. And save your voice for the contest. I will. Have you seen any sign of Uncle Joe? Nope. I wonder where he could be. I'm real worried. What was that? Sounded like Ben Miller's shotgun. Well, I guess Uncle Joe will be coming home soon. Billy <laughs> Joe, I will not have you talking like that. Uncle Joe is not a jinx. Shake hands with Jinx Carson. <laughs> what? That's the name I'm operating under from now on. <laughs> you, you, you come with me, Uncle Joe. I uh, kept your supper warm for you. Well, I ain't got time for supper. I gotta write up some advertising circulars. <laughs> if you'd rather get into bed, I'll bring you up some hot soup. But I don't want any soup. Where's Billy Joe's typewriter? Well, I'd better not use it. With my fantastic jinxing powers, it might fall apart. <laughs> Uncle Joe, why don't you get into bed? I'll put the hand car on the tracks and bring Dr. Stewart. Kate, I I'm not sick. I don't need a doctor. Look at me. What do you see? A man that walked too far in the hot sun. <laughs> You're looking at a million dollars on the hoof. Kate. I'm going into the jinx business. You don't know what a wonderful day I've had. First, I wrecked the train. Then I stopped by Newt Kiley's and watched the wheel fall off his tractor. Then on to Fred Ziffel's, where I had an exciting ten minutes drying up a new well. And less than a half hour later, I stopped by Ben Miller's, 
I heard a shotgun blast from over there. It's going to take him a month to rebuild his barn. <laughs> Show. Kate, with a series of fantastical, disasterful events like that, what other way is there to go except into the jinxing business? <laughs> Professional jinx? He's even got his slogan. If you're looking for trouble, call Joe the Jinx. <laughs> no. He spent half the night preparing an advertising brochure, complete with rates. You mean he's figuring on charging for bringing bad luck? Sundays and holidays, time and a half. <laughs> That's not all. He wants to hire himself out to you fellas at the Hooterville Chamber of Commerce. To do what? Two jinx crabwell corners out of the box factory. Kate, I hate to tell you this, but you better reserve him a room in the dingling factory. I'm pretty worried, Sam. Yeah. How much is he figuring on charging for this? Twelve dollars. Twelve dollars? Oh, poor Joe. Well, he says it's worth 25, but he figures that the word of mouth advertising he'll get will bring him enough business to do it cut rate. I don't know about that, but twelve dollars. Hmm. Still, that's not, that's not too bad a price now to pay for getting the box factory over here. Sam, you don't really think Uncle Joe can bring the box factory here? Oh, of course not, Kate. Twelve dollars, huh? <laughs> you know, if you're even considering this, you're in worse shape than Uncle Joe. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of guarantee would he give? <laughs> I guarantee if you give him twelve dollars, you'll be throwing away good money. Uncle Joe can't... Jinx anything, anybody, any place, any time. Oh, Kate, I know he can't. Well, I should hope so. Jinx. <laughs> Get out! Out! Sam! What were we just talking about? Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Come on in, Joe. Uh, have a pickle. Thanks. <laughs> Here's your twelve dollars, Joe. <laughs> Kate, if you want to observe, observe, but don't interfere. But I was just wondering who you were looking at. The chamber president, Pip Winslow. He's my prime target. But he's not in there. Who's doing this job, you or me? Kate, will you please? Hi, Pip. Told you. Hi, you, Pip. Fine, Kate. Hooterville sends you over to try to land the box factory? Maybe they did, and maybe they didn't. Well, if they did, you're wasting your time. Because Rogers, the manager, is waiting for me in my office to close the deal. You're wasting your time. Rogers ain't going to close the deal. Pop over in a few weeks, and I'll give you a free box. <laughs> Looks like we got here just in time. Now or never. Come on, let's get around where we can get a clear shot at the office. <laughs> How long are you going to do that? Till I get my bad luck warmed up. <laughs> What's Pip doing now? and Mr. Rogers are looking over the blueprints. I'm feeling pretty unlucky. What's next? I start jinxing. Just like that. Don't you have to set up a table or something? What for? Well, you're in business. Shouldn't you have some equipment? Hey, it all comes from up here. You don't carry much of an inventory. Hey, the only reason I let you come along was so you could tell Sam that he got his $12 worth. What are they doing in there now? They're laughing. That's because they ain't started. Is that the usual procedure? I got to get the right bad luck angle. They're still laughing. That won't last long. Kate, are you sure you want to watch this? It can get pretty terrifying. I'll try not to scream. Once I get started, there's no stopping me. Now stand back. Riggedy Rack. Riggedy Racks. On Crabwell Corners, put a double hex pick on the table. The desk still standing? 
Still standing. Maybe you better try another bad luck angle. I'm just trying to help. Riggity rack. Riggity rack. On crab wheel corners for the triple hex. Take a look at the desk now. Looks better now than before. I wonder if the altitude's the same over in Crabwell Corner. Whether it is or whether it isn't, you better get busy. They're gonna sign the contract. Kate, the hex is working. They're out of ink. Fee, fum, fi, fo. Bring Crabwell Corners lots of wool. The ink spilling all over the contract? None on the contract. Went all over their suits. Roger's probably gonna blow the deal. Nope. Well, something must have happened. Yep. They signed the contract. What? <laughs> Kate, I'm stuck. Don't show your stuff. Here, let me get you up. I fall from fee. You'll need a hacksaw to get you free. Oh, 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 oh. And so Uncle Joe had to give Sam back his $12, plus paying the plumber $8 for sawing his neck out of the bars. But it was worth it. Now we know Uncle Joe isn't a jinx. Oh, it sure seemed like he was. Well, he isn't, so the matter's closed. Betty Joe, are you ready yet? Be right down, Mom. Sarah Jane here? No, but she will be in a few seconds. You're supposed to be at the high school half hour before the contest starts. Do you think Betty Joe will win again? I don't know. Sarah Jane's pretty good. How do I look, Mom? Hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the epic. <clears throat> it was the epic. I lost my voice. What was it you were saying about Uncle Joe? But Uncle Joe isn't even here. Well, then who? How? Him! How could you accuse such a sweet, innocent little dog of such a terrible thing? But, Mom, think. Every time Uncle Joe was supposed to have brought somebody bad luck, the dog was with him. Were you? Except in Crabwell Corners, where Uncle Joe could have but used... what about it. my voice? We'll get you some hot water and honey. But there isn't time. Yes, there is. Come on. Betty Jo! It's Sarah Jane. Uh, <laughs> you two start the water boiling, and uh, I'll keep her busy. Okay, come on. Good evening, Mrs. Bradley. How are you, Sarah Jane? Just fine. You all ready for the contest? Contest? <laughs> You don't really think it'll be a contest. Well, it's supposed to be a contest. <laughs> if Betty Jo had a chance, I've been uh, taking private elocution lessons. Well, is that fair? <laughs> all's fair in love and war. You did say all's fair in love and war, didn't you? Yes. But well, while you're waiting, why don't you uh, pet Betty Jo's dog? <laughs> you said, all's fair in love and war. This has been a Filmways presentation.